Well, hello and welcome to Winning in Prayer. I am Apostle Daryl Johnson. Thank you so much for being with us again. Listen, we have a special guest on tonight, all the way from Nassau, Bahamas, and I'm sure you're going to thoroughly enjoy uh, this man's ministry. He is uh, Pastor Terry Strap again from Nassau, Bahamas. Pastor, welcome to Winning in Prayer. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Apostle. Thank you for this invitation. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. We 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 have been excited all week about uh, having you on. Um, I was just excited, you know, when the offer uh, you you accepted right away. Uh, you know, Pastor Strap's ministry can be seen every Monday night at uh, midnight on the Winning in Prayer TV network. But I wanted I wanted him to be able to be seen live uh, by our viewers. And again, I'm thorough, I'm sure you're going to thoroughly enjoy enjoy him. So before I turn you loose, Pastor. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about the ministry. Well, I have been saved officially since 1992. Before that, I gave my life to the Lord millions of times, but it wasn't until 1992, the beginning of the year, I really rededicated myself to the Lord. And in that very moment, I literally felt a knapsack cover my shoulders that I didn't realize that I was carrying all those years. Wow. And since then, I have continued in the journey by God's grace, and I embraced the call of God of my life as I was reading the scriptures in prayer and fasting. And when I arrived to Psalms 28 and verse 9, the Holy Spirit says, this is who you are right here. And it says, save thy people, bless thine inheritance, feed them also, and lift them up forever. And after that, prophets and prophetess began to affirm the call of God of my life. And here I am today by God's grace. Wow, nice, nice. Well, listen, <laughs> I I uh, I know that uh, the people are going to be blessed tonight. I'm going to back out, uh, allow the Lord to have his way. So glad you said yes again, and I'll see you at the end. All right, so thank you. Well, President, good evening to all. I'm happy that you have taken the time to come and view this live broadcast where we expect to receive from the Lord. And so in that vein, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you with humble hearts. We give you thanks for this opportunity to release your word in the ears of us, your people. Father, I pray now, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I loose ministering angels now to go forward and command the atmosphere to be conducive to the deliverance of God's truths in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, I bind you now, your cohorts, all your plans and your plots for preventing this word to reach the predestined persons that God has assigned for this season and for this time. And I give you the praise, God. I give you the praise for using me according to your word, that you might be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good evening. Again, we're going to be talking on a touchy subject, the subject of giving. And you might be saying here, goes another pastor again, talking about giving. But giving is a very essential part of humanity. And I'm not going to give you a preach word as such. I'm going to drop some nuggets, if you will, in your, in your hearing on today. So this message, this um, ministry is entitled Giving Nuggets to Developing and Expanding Kingdom Givers. Again, this is really geared towards kingdom-minded persons. Now, if you are a kingdom-minded person, you can still learn from it, but it's truly geared towards kingdom-minded persons. Again, these are just nuggets I want to release in your spirit and your heart and your mind so that we can begin to realize these truths according to the voice of God. The first point is ignorance is as good as a map that leads to poverty. Ignorance is as good as a map that leads to poverty. We know what a map serves and purpose gives us guidance, give us direction so that we can reach our destination. 
And if you aren't knowledgeable of how you can come out of poverty, you would only remain in your poverty state. And this poverty, in this sense, is simply living below God's economic status for your life. Let me say that again. This poverty is defined as living below God's economic status for your life. God has predestined us according to scripture. The writer says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. And so with the knowledge that I believe God is going to release unto you today, we're going to redirect our path out of that lifestyle that is below God's economic status for our life. You may even have hundreds of dollars on your bank account, even thousands. That doesn't mean that you're living in the economic lifestyle that God has predetermined for your life. Perhaps God has de determined that you be a millionaire, a trillionaire. And so we want to attain the very height that God has purposed us to achieve and live before the foundation of the world. So don't discount where you are in this moment. Next nugget is wisdom. can buy anything, but buy it. One can acquire whatever one desires. Wisdom is married to knowledge. With that knowledge, we need an understanding. And so we know that wisdom is not a currency, but by it, we could achieve and acquire anything that we desire. When you walk through the pages, you will see persons walked and they acted in wisdom. And by that wisdom, they gained favor. They gained access to the thing that they look for, the thing that they search for, to the very thing that they desire. And so God has given you wisdom in this hour for us to achieve, for us to attain, for us to lay hold of all those things that we desire. The writer says, in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is a tool of understanding. And so I believe God wants us to grow in our understanding. He wants us to grow in wisdom, in knowledge, and in revelation. And so I'm going to reveal some stuff to us today so that we can live in that economic plane, in that economic vein that God has foreordained for you to live in this very season. Whatever you're willing to give makes you qualified to receive. Let this sink in for a minute. Whatever you're willing to give makes you qualified to receive the very same thing. The Bible says, if you be friendly, you would have friends. Give and it shall be given unto you. In other words, whatever that it is that you're giving, you are now qualified to receive the very same thing that you're giving. You keep going around declaring that you will never amount to nothing. You poor, broke, disgusted. You can't... Uh, you know where the next penny is coming from, and that's what you're going to receive. If you continue to speak that in the atmosphere, if you continue to decree a thing, the Bible says it shall be a Sabbath, whatever that thing is. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 21, the life and death lies in the power of our tongue. So it is with our giving. So it is with the things that we extend to another person, to another people, to another body. Whatever you're willing to give makes you qualified to receive it. Zero is the beginning point of your next. For some of you right now are at the very low state of your life. You, 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 you can look up for looking beneath where things are so bad. You, 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 you're questioning where is God in this very moment? Where is Jehovah Jireh in my life in this very Zoom that I'm in? 
but I just dropped by for just two minutes just to let you know zero is the beginning point of your next. God has predetermined for you to be watching this live right now so that you can elevate, so that you could be projected to your economic status that he has predetermined for you to be realizing and living in. Denial is the first sign of addiction, a.k.a. a stronghold. I always tell my people, the same way how we get saved is the same way how we maintain our salvation. We have to be honest with God. We have to accept God's word. And we have to remind him of what that word is. And so if you go around denying your status and denying that you are where you should not be or whatever the situation is, that is a signature. That's an indication that you have been arrested by a stronghold. And God wants you to be released from every stronghold in this very hour. The scripture says that we have the power to pull down strongholds and every high thing that exalts itself to the knowledge of God, by the power of God. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it is true knowledge that we are delivered. And so I'm releasing you some nuggets. I'm releasing you some knowledge. I'm releasing you some revelation so that you can be delivered from your proper state. And it starts in the mind. That's why the Bible says that a man think it. So what he does, doesn't say as a man possesses, but as a man thinks, so is he. So if you are living in a denial state, not willing to acknowledge your true status in life as far as God is concerned. Because you might be sitting pretty as far as others may be concerned. Or you might be sitting low as far as others are concerned. But you have to begin to confess. You have to begin to decree. You have to begin to, to realize in your mind, in your spirit, I am better than this. Gideon, when he was faced with the angel, he, he, he started to deny what the angel had declared him to be. The angel says, you are mighty man of valor. And he began to question the angel's salutations. He began to question what the angel was declaring over his life. And so he sought God and by facing God. And this is the answer to your fleece on tonight, that God is calling you to a higher place, not just spiritually, but also financially. Don't allow your routine to cause you to miss your route. That's powerful for someone right there. Don't allow your routine to cause you to miss your route. Routine is something that you are constantly used to doing, a, a way of living that you have been so accustomed that you, you, you don't believe it is possible for your life to be any better. Perhaps it's a generational thing. Your, your great, 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 great grandparents were poor. Living at a mediocre standard. But God is saying to you today, don't allow your routine to become your route. God wants you to experience a different plane. God wants you to experience a different life. Rahab was a prostitute. But she didn't allow her routine to cause her to miss out on her route. She then became an heir. One of the patriarchs in the saving or in the birthing of the Christ. So God is saying to you today, don't allow your routine, don't allow what you have been so accustomed to, to let you believe that this is it. Nothing better can happen for your life. Don't allow the naysayers. Don't allow history. Don't allow your parentage to cause you to miss but God is trying to redirect you out of and into a better place. The quickest way to learn, acquire something, is to desire it. Let me say that again. The quickest way for you to learn and acquire something is to desire it. Now, if you're not interested in being better, if you're not interested in elevation, if you're not interested in living that 
economic life that God has forehand ordained for you. you. You can walk away from your screen right now. You can flip the channel and watch Netflix and watch an action, watch a comedy, watch cartoons, whatever you want to watch. This is not for you. You got to have a desire for this thing. The Bible says you'll always know where man treasure is, where his heart is. If you don't have a heart, if you don't have a mind that your life can be better, I say again, you can just walk away right now. Flip the scums, flip the channel, watch something else. But God wants you to know that despite your routine, he has a better route for you. He has a better plan for you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said God. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. We can expect God to bring us through. That's why Abraham didn't have a problem making Isaac a sacrifice because he knew the power that resided in his God. God had already revealed to him that he is the God Almighty. That's why he said, even to his servants, I and the lad shall return. He didn't know how that was going to happen, but he spoke according to his knowledge. He spoke according to his understanding of his God. That's why God wants you to bring you to an understanding that you don't have to continue in the routine, in the rut that you've been so accustomed of living all these years, all these months, all these centuries that your family has endured. God is calling you to a higher and a better plane in this very season and this very hour. Give only to that which is part or bears your likeness. When it comes to giving, the Bible principle is that we should only give to that which is a part of or bears a likeness. When the woman came to Jesus saying, heal my daughter, he said to her, it is not meat for me to give the children's bread to the dogs. But when she gave Jesus a revelation that she is a part of the family, he then said, okay, I can give you what you're asking for. And so God is saying to us by principle that we should only give those who are a part or bears the likeness of who we are. We all are made in the image and likeness of God. You don't want to be given to a demonic entity. You don't want to be given to someone who is possessed by demons. You don't want to be given to a ministry that is birthed by satanic altars. You don't want to be giving your money to a pastor that, 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 that has given himself over to the devil. You want to be given to a man or woman of God. You want to be giving to God's creation, who God has created. That's why the Bible says that we need not concern ourselves about how these things are going to be met in our lives. Because if he could feed the bird and clothe the flowers, how much more would he clothe? That's why the Bible says that God reigned on the just and, and just because he knows that they were made in his image and in his likeness. And so in principle, you and I should not be given to anyone that does not bears the nature and the likeness of our God. The process of creating is the process of sustaining. We're back to the point I made earlier. The same way how we get saved is the same way how we sustain our salvation. The same measure, the same 
strategy, the same way that you acquire wealth is the same way how you are able to sustain wealth. It doesn't change. Principles aren't bias. A witchcraft worker could take the same Bible that you and I read or ought to be reading and believe in wholeheartedly and chant those words and would bring he or she desired effect. Because the principle of God's word is in bias. How much more if you and I apply those principles of creating wealth, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. If we apply those same principles of creating our wealth, that same principle would able to us to be sustained in a wealthy place. Whatever you have is either a seed or a solution. Whatever you have is either a seed or a solution. You might think you don't have enough, but according to the principles of God's word, you have exactly what you need. You have a seed. If all you have is a seed, you have the means to create what you need. And if you have what you need, well, that goes without saying. And so whatever you have is either a seed or a solution. It's a seed either for you or for somebody else. It's a solution for you or for somebody else. Because again, when Jesus' disciples asked him to teach us how to pray, the first word he said is ah. He said, ah, Father. In other words, it goes beyond just you praying for yourself. It goes beyond just you living a good life. That's why in the early church, it says that they had all things in common. It may not necessarily mean they had the same level of housing, but it means that they all had housing. May not necessarily mean that they ate the very same food, but it means that they all had food. So God wants us all to have a common life in his kingdom. The one who has not and him who does not make use of what he has are in the same state. The person who is begging for food and the person who has food that does not eat it are in the same place. And so the principle is, if you have money and you're not using that money to better your life, you're no different from the person who does not have a dime to their name. But whether you are the one without or the one with, God wants you to exercise your right as a child of God and be the better for it. There is often a loss before there is a surplus. I'll say that again. There's often a loss before there is a surplus. A seed must be sown before a harvest can ever arise. After the Adam sin, the Bible says, by the sweat of our brow, we will eat. So we have the expand energy in order for us to have something to energize us, enable us to sustain our lives. That's the principle of this word. We must be willing to lose what we have 
if only for a moment, realizing that it does not leave our lives. It only leaves our, our hands for a moment. But it has to come back. And particularly, like I said earlier, you don't want to be sowing. You don't want to be giving your monies. You don't want to be giving your time. You don't want to be giving your energy into a demonic field. You're not going to reap God's benefits. You're not going to reap God's blessings. But if you give it in that place, in that field, I understand even when Jesus spoke the parable of the man that sowed the wheat and then the enemy came and sowed tares. In as much as the enemy sowed tares in that same field, the tares were not able to diminish the wheat's growth. And so it doesn't matter what the enemy does concerning your life. If God established, if God ordained, if God unctioned you to sow a seed or give an offering or be a blessing or give something that you value away, let it go. Understanding who it is that is directing you to give it. You reminded of the woman at Zarephath. The Bible says God had commanded. He asked her. Sometimes God has have the commandments because He knows we don't be really willing to release some stuff. So He has to take the authoritative posture and command us. And then, as much as He commanded the woman, she was still reluctant to be a blessing to the prophet of God. But because of his insistency, and sometimes this is where we fall to too, we, we, we don't be insistent on some stuff that God asks us to do. We don't be insistent in prayer. We don't be insistent in studying the word. We don't be insistent in spending time with the Lord. And we expect our spiritual lives to be the better for it. It doesn't happen that way. Sowing your time in prayer and reading the word of God is just like sowing money. You will reap. Again, whatever you give, it will be given unto you. Don't save what is purpose to be spent or given. This is particularly for persons who, who, who don't tithe. 10% of your earnings. And that increase is if somebody bless you today with $1,000, that's like an earning. You will increase $1,000. So 10% of that belongs to the Lord. If you have apartments, whatever businesses you have, 10% of your earnings belong to the Lord. So you should not be saving something that God had already ordained and sanctified to be given. You're misusing what you have. That's misuse. It may be good in your mind that you're saving, but you're, you're misusing the very thing God has blessed you with. And God would not look upon you favorably if you don't use what he purposed you to use in this every hour. A genuine appreciation for a thing comes from understanding his purpose. This solidifies the point I just made. If you understand the purpose of money, then you are in a better position to appreciate its use. How to use it. Where to expend it. Where to release it. Where to sow it. 
because God would have revealed to you, even as he's revealing you in this very moment, the very purpose of your financial intake. Even your life as a whole. Because there's two things you wouldn't want to misuse, your body, because that's where God resides. And your money, that's what sustains where God resides. So don't try to save what is purpose to be given or spent. And understand the reason why you have what you have. You have a life that is given to you by God. And that life is for a divine purpose. Not just to be kicking about, not just to go to work or just to be sitting up on the couch or doing whatever you routinely do. The Bible says the whole duty of man is to serve God and to keep his commandments. That is the sole purpose of our living. So the minute we come to understand this, then we, should, or we ought to appreciate our lives to have meaning, to have purpose, and therefore use it wisely. Use it to the glory of God. Usage is the defining point of ability. Usage is the defining point of ability. If you have a lawnmower and you're trying to clean your rug, As much as a lawnmower is able to clean your yard, it isn't able to clean a rug. And so if God purposed for you to have money, if God purposed for you to have a life, we ought to realize its ability by its use. Allow the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to guide you, to instruct you, to bring forth those giftings and talents for his use. And for his glory. Because some of us, we have gifts and talents that we must use them. We're not ascribing them to the assignment that God has given to us. And so God wants us to use these things properly in the context and the purpose to which he had released them in our lives. We should do things not because of what we can gain, but instead because of what we have achieved. Let me say that again. Whatever you do, you should do it not because of what you can gain, but because of what you have already achieved. Let me put it this way. As they say, pass it forward or play it forward. For the fact that you have overcome some situations in your lives, 
that you have to be given your testimony. Not just to be seen or noticed or applauded. But that somebody else can also be delivered as you yourself was delivered. So that somebody else can be set free. Just as you yourself was set free. All this is a part of giving. So giving goes beyond finances. I think it's the book of Hebrews says the very thing that God brings us out of is the very thing he draws us back to be ministers in that area. So if you've been struggling with pornography and God delivered you from it, you are the very vessel that God is willing to use to deliver somebody else. If you are broke and disgusted and God has began to elevate you financially, that's the very thing God wants you to assist somebody in acquiring. Possession often determines position. Possession often determines position. The things we possess in life, there's a saying, if you don't have no land, you don't have no rights. That's what Martin Luther would have fought for, that we have right ownership to land, to property. At some point, I think persons in the U.S. couldn't vote unless they would have had ownership of property. I believe the same thing can be said here locally. And so by reason that we have now reached a higher level in life, enabling us to possess some stuff, our position in life has changed. We might not be where we want to be, but the change has begun. Like I said earlier, zero is the beginning point of next. You only have to start somewhere. There's an old saying, every journey begins with the first step. The same way our habit is developed incrementally on a bad note is the same way how that habit can be shifted on a good note incrementally. So God wants us to possess this knowledge today so that we could have an understanding of what kingdom-minded persons ought to have. The signature of hope is a seed sown. The signature that you and I have hope is when we sow a seed. Because the seed takes time to germinate. If you believe you can die today, you're not going to sow a seed. But the very fact that you have a mindset to sow in somebody's life for their betterment and see them be better. The minute that you have a mindset to sow that dollar, that $10, that $100, that $1,000, whatever you have the capacity to sow, it shows that you have a hope that you're going to be around to reap the benefit. When I used to sell insurance, I used to tell my prospects that buying an insurance policy today, in some essence, gives you immortality. 
Because you're not buying that for yourself. You're buying that for the persons who are dependent on you in this very moment. So that when you leave, even though you're gone, what you would have left behind is still a representation of you. And so because you are sowing a seed, as it were, by initiating this insurance policy, after you are gone physically, you'll still be around momentarily. And somebody, the Bible says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And so this hope is, goes beyond just as you as an individual. Like I said earlier, this goes beyond just the individual. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a family affair, if I should use that expression. To have hope that your family will continue living and experience a better life. Never plant where seeds can grow. Never plant where seeds can grow. Let me add to that. In a godly manner. Because you could go and give some money to a rich path worker and they could work something in your favor and it, it could seemingly be to your betterment. But the Bible says there's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Let's look at the life of Isaac. He had a mind to go somewhere, but the Lord tell him, stay right here. And after he told, I think it was King Abimelech, that Sarah is his sister, and the king of Abimelech realized that he was lying, and the king of Abimelech secured him from having any retaliation. People couldn't touch him. It was in that security, the Bible says, and Isaac sold. And he reaped a hundredfold. So one of the key signatures of where you should sow is where you are secured. So in the thing, the environment that offers you a sense of security. And just as it was with Isaac, by principle, so shall it be with you. And I'm trusting that this word has given you a sense of security on today. That you are better than what your routine would have told you you are. That God has predetermined your life to move from heights to heights, from levels to levels, as the scripture says, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. You have not to give. If you have not to give, rather, you have not to live. In truth, that you don't have nothing to give, you really don't have no life. Let's look at the body. We breathe in oxygen. We breathe out carbon monoxide. Whatever we breathe out, nature takes it and gives us what we need. So the very fact that we are giving, we are sowing a seed even from a breath perspective to receive what is necessary to live. So don't think for a second that you don't have anything to give. 
But the very fact that you are alive, it is a signature that you have something to give. Let's go even a little deeper from a spiritual perspective. Persons only would have died in the kingdom of God after they would have served their purpose. Let that sink in. So I say again, for the very fact that you are alive, it is an indication, it's a signature that there is still something that you possess to give. And if you make use of whatever you have until you find your ability, then you'll be able to walk in that purpose. If you can't identify with a thing or person, you won't be able to maximize the use and or gain from the worth thereof. The people followed Jesus because they, 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 they knew that he was able to feed them. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. So you and I have to identify our purpose in this life. We have to identify the reason why God has enabled us to receive finances so that we can gain from the worth thereof. Understand this very thing. Whatever you receive either identifies you or redefines who you are. The Bible says you give bread to the eater and seed to the sower. So you could be able to determine who you are even from that very text. If throughout your life as a child of God, living holy and righteously before God, you've always been given bread, then you're just an eater. But for whatever reason, no matter how you may try to duck it, no matter how you may try to avoid it, you're always being sown into. Someone has always given you something for you to activate. For you to cause increase, for you to cause multiplication. And that's who you are. And you, you, you should not look on the either lesser than yourself. Or even more than yourself. The scripture says, in the house there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. Just embrace how God made you. It's the same way how the Syphonician woman embraced the fact that God called her a dog, even though literally she was not a dog. She embraced that identity. And embracing that identity, she received a breakthrough. So don't run from who you are. So I say again, whatever you receive, either it identifies you or it redefines who you are. Because sometimes we just think we are one thing, but God knows that we are something else. really hope that you're getting this word on today as I'm releasing it in your spirit, as I'm releasing it in your heart. 
The only time harvest comes before the seed is in the dictionary. <laughs> so don't, don't expect to get a harvest unless you would have sown a seed. Even from a spiritual perspective, the Bible says when we pray in secret, he will warn us openly. That prayer life in secret is a seed. Those times spending in the word of God is a seed. So when you go forth and begin to speak, begin to minister to others, out of your belly would flow rivers of living water. Because why? You, you would have sown time. The same principle applies to our finances. If you sow, the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters and not many days hence. Again, it didn't specify how many days, because not many days could be a thousand years. The Bible says a thousand years is as a day in the eyes of God. But we have the assurance that if we sow, we shall reap. There's no question if we can reap. It's the time that God has ordained for us to reap. Take them to take them with me to work. Hallelujah. And, I, and while I was working, I would I would take it out of my pocket, read it, then quote it to myself. Uh -huh. I would go to the next one. I would, I would and I'm going by. Lady Tammy, we are on location, so I'm glad to be here on tonight. We're in one, he's in one place and I am in another. So, but I'm still glad to be here. Glad that you would join us on Friday Night Live. This is Apostle Carla McDougall with Carla McDougall Ministries. Amen. I am one of the ministries that broadcast on the Winning in Prayer Network. And I'd like to take a few moments um, to just share with you my experience and to share with you um, the benefits of being able to broadcast through a godly network. Amen. I'd like to share with you um, my experience of being able to express the heart of God and to be able to share the gospel with a diverse group of people throughout this earth to be able to advance the kingdom of God in the earth by way of preaching and teaching, by way of prophesying and even 
in some cases providing counsel as it were to some individuals to be able to release the word of God so that the unbeliever might repent and accept Christ as his or her savior so that the believer that the babe in Christ may be strengthened and may be able to grow um, and to grow in grace and to grow by grace and to grow up into the things of God so that the more experienced, the more mature, perfected believer will be able to be strengthened and then in their walk and along this journey. So I am extremely grateful to God for the man of God, Apostle Daryl and the woman of God, Pastor Tammy Johnson, who are visionary and founders of the Winning in Prayer Network. It has been an honor. It has been an extreme blessing to, to reach a diverse group of people throughout this earth and throughout this nation to be able to minister um, in a diverse way. Um, as you all know, for those of you who are preachers of the gospel, if you are considering to be a part of this great family of ministries, I would encourage you to do so. Amen. Um, as you know, as preachers, those of us who are preachers, we understand that our greatest mandate, that our greatest assignment, that our greatest task in this earth as preachers is to be able to publish or to demonstrate the word of God and to be able to do so in uh, to a diverse group of people. The scripture reminds us, amen, that when we publish the word of God, when we publish the heart of God, we open up the earth, we create pathways and we create um, roads and avenues by which God's people can be drawn unto him. The scripture decrees and we declare that as Christ is lifted high above the earth that he will draw all men not unto him and to have this awesome opportunity to have this awesome platform that reaches throughout the world that reaches throughout this earth to be able to lift God up by way of word to be able to to lift up the Savior by way of the word so that with that same word God can draw his people not to him close to him draw his people into his bosom, um, cause his people to be a part of his family, that the spirit of adoption can be released and others be drawn in. I am eternally grateful and I am honored for the opportunity to be amongst such a great cloud of witnesses in this day's generation who are using this exact um, platform, this exact network to be able to publish the gospel for as many people for as many diverse groups of people that are in this earth there are that many diverse preachers of the gospel it gives each of us the opportunity to administer the word of God to God's people in a way that will not only draw them unto him, but will manifest the promises of God concerning their lives. This platform, amen, is one of the great God platforms by which we advance the kingdom of God, by which we are able to advance the righteousness, the peace, and the joy of the Lord in the Holy Ghost throughout this earth. It is a tool, a mechanism that God has allowed for his preachers and the ministers of the gospel to be able to reach magnitudes and multitudes and diverse groups of people that we otherwise will not be able to meet, that some of us will be brought into nations and into countries that we otherwise would have no experience with. So I am once again eternally grateful to God for the opportunity, a man to freely express without fear, without hesitation, the heart of God, the will of God, and the word of God concerning his people to be able to express the promises and to convey and to relay and to relate to the promises of God that the people of God, that they who confess will be able to be partakers of the promise. So once again, to Apostle Darrell and Pastor Tammy Johnson, I say once again, it's an honor and it is a privilege and I am eternally grateful for this great opportunity to use this streaming platform on the Ro on Roku TV, Winning in Prayer Network on Roku TV to be able to share the heart of God. God bless you once again. I am Apostle Carla McDougal with Carla McDougal Ministries. And I minister and broadcast on the Winning in Prayer Network. God bless.